have some pain oh, in this yeah, in this so foot, but it's there. not like a like I don't think I have an injury. All right, yeah. all right. So again, active range of motion, just simply having someone like dorsiflex. Which, if we can see, she can dorsiflex further on the left than on the right, which might indicate she's got some tightness in the gas sac and soleus. Or she can dorsi, yeah, dorsiflex further on the left than the right. Maybe tightness in the gas sac soleus here, or some weakness in the tibia anterior about plantar flexing. Okay, and she can plantar flex better on the left than the right. So. In general, we've either got a little bit too much motion or mobility on the left ankle or not enough on the right. Don't know which one is the case. She doesn't have any, no injury? Well, no, I, had nothing active. I had nothing active. I had surgery on this foot. Okay. So having surgery there probably says that this one's a little too tight. <clears throat> Muscles are still on a low grade level guarding or uh, might be some low grade scar tissue just kind of generically in the ankle which limits the mobility a little bit as opposed to saying this one's too loosey-goosey floppy right so you try and do just inversion and eversion actually invert a little better on the right foot okay and then everting but cannot evert quite as far on the right so let's think about that for a second so she can invert quite well on the right, means tibialis anterior and tibialis posterior are kicking in fairly well, but she can't evert very well, which means that her peroneals are probably a little bit weak or underactive. And so we've got that push-pull, right? And we've got the muscles that do this that are really kicking in, and that kind of shuts these down so that she can't do that very well. Could it also be if she'd ever had an ankle sprain there, you've got a little bit of laxity in that yes. anterior talocellular, yep. and on the other side, having a little bit of compression on the deltoid? Yeah, so we've got a little bit, maybe a little bit of laxity here, and these muscles are still exhibiting some relative weakness, and then these guys are taking advantage of that and pulling them a little further, correct? I think so, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Let's, we'll do a couple other tests here on that, and then let's look at the glute medius on the right side to see if there is weakness there um, from that ankle sprain. So passively, we would just do the same thing, right? For passive dorsiflexion, we're going to cut the calcaneus, bring that up, plantar flexion down, any pain? Inversion, eversion, we're going to go just a little bit below the crease of the ankle. And we're going to try and keep the leg from rotating as best we can. And we're going to rotate in the inversion and eversion. And then same thing on this side. Definitely so, a little stiffer here. So again, you were going to the side where you saw that there were fewer potential issues. Yeah, usually, it usually start on the unaffected or what we hope is the healthy side. Mm -hmm. There's not always a healthy side, mm -hmm. but because um, that gives you a baseline. And even here, everything's just a little bit stiffer at the end. And that's got some good motion. Even passively, she doesn't evert as well. All right, so it might not be just the muscle weakness issue out here. It might be that as that ankle went into an inversion, we did get a little bit of compression on the medial side. We've got a little bit of scar tissue here that's restricting the ability of the ankle to passively evert. No pain? Mm -mm. All right, good deal. So for time's sake, I'm going to do the muscle test just on the affected side. Again, we can either isolate specific muscles by thinking what are their individual actions, or we can just test, and we got about four, four or five different actions and, and then see what kind of result we get. So if we wanted to test the strength of her dorsiflexors, we're going to put her into a little bit of dorsiflexion. It's going to have you hold your ankle there. And resist as I try and take her, oh, a little pop there, take her out of dorsiflexion. Okay. Any pain? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to do inversion and eversion, and then we'll do um, plantar flexion with her face down because we differentiated gastroc and soleus. So inversion, we're going to put her into a little bit of inversion. Have you hold there. And resist as I try and take her out of inversion. Relax, in pain. I do have some pain in here. Okay. Try it again. Sometimes when folks have pain, it might be where your hand is. All right. So let's 
Let's do the other version. I'm going to put her into a little bit of a foot sandwich here. All right, so have you hold your foot there in inversion in your exit. Okay. Bring it out. So it's just probably the pressure from my hand that was causing that pain. Um, eversion. Mm. Okay, try and hold there. Okay, we'll come back to this. Very strong. Yeah, we think. Okay. Uh, let's get to you head that way on your belly, feet down here real quick. All right, so if I want to test gastroc, what do we need to do with the knee? Or no, not for that for so many Yeah, so we want to keep the knee straight for gastroc. She's already in a little bit of plantar flexion, so Robin, hold your foot there. You can already see gastroc kicking in, right? And it's popping when I... Yeah. Hmm. There was a condition that talked about crepitus. Anybody know what the condition right. was? Here's another one right here. Yeah. So it's possible. Could be a, a Achilles tendon issue. We'd have to isolate. See if we can isolate where that clicking is. We'll get there. All right. So hold there, and resist. Relax. Any pain? Mm -mm. Okay. So that was gastroc. Soleus. Flexing the knee so we weaken the gastroc because it does act on the knee a little bit. Put her in the plantar flexion again and resist. And relax. Any pain? Um, no, I mean, nothing in here. I get some on my ankle. Okay. So let's try it slightly different. So I'm going to not put you quite as far in the plantar flexion. So hold there okay. and resist. All right, so um, go ahead and move your ankle around again and see if you get the clicking. Keep going. It's more with the toe. Yeah, it's further up. Keep going. Tell me what uh, what you had done to your ankle. Um, well, it was a it was you know normal foot pretty. Um, Okay. All right. Okay. So that's going to be along this medial aspect. Go ahead and try it again. There's a little. Go ahead and relax. So we're getting some popping kind of right on the distal end of the first metatarsal, kind of at the metatarsal phalangeal joint. Probably just a result of having some hardware in there and a little bit of scar tissue. But no pain with that clicking, popping? Uh -uh. No. How long ago was your surgery? It was 2011. Okay. okay. Um, probably wouldn't hurt to make some effort to break up some of the potential. Lying on your right side to start, so you're going to be facing that way. So we want to test again the unaffected hip, and then we'll test the affected hip and see if we get any difference. So, and we'll, we'll get more into the test the hips later, but I just wanted to see if we get any results. So, glute medius essentially runs from back here to here, kind of like this, and glute minimus is just a little guy tucked underneath. So really weakness in either of these may show up on the side that had the ankle sprain. So keep the bottom leg where it is, top leg, we're gonna straighten it out, and keep this rolling. Raise that up a little bit. Can we rotate just a touch? All right, so hold your leg there. Don't let me push you down. Okay, relax. Any pain? No, we just in my low back. In your low back. Okay, so we don't care about the low back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like five or six classes from now. Try to flip to the other side. Next one. Next Irrelevant one. information. Next strike one. it from the record. Hmm. All right, go ahead and bend this knee up a little bit. Stay. There. So you're just stabilizing with the left hand? Yep. And resist. And relax. Any pain? Um, when I'm holding it, can you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Looked a little weaker, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to press with about the same mm -hmm. amount of force. You can see there's a little bit of weakness here. So mm -hmm. residual weakness here as a result of the ankle sprain. Again, it's not necessarily because of a mechanical 
issue down there, but a compensation. If we don't want to weight that leg, we're going to hike this hip and that's going to stretch out or elongate the glute tissue on the side of the hip. And so it functionally becomes weak. And again, that can linger for a long time. And maybe someone comes in with low back pain and the thing that we track it back to is some issue in the ankle. Uh, not to discount what's happening there because we need to address it, but someone else will target where we think it's, it's stemming from.